Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make the Drunken Clem from the show Family Guy. The Drunken Clem is Quahog's main bar. It's an incredibly common setting in the show for Peter and his friends to hang out in, kind of akin to Moe's from The Simpsons. Not only is this a cartoon-related build, which is always fun, but it is also a bar, which Mini City doesn't actually have, so I'm very much looking forward to adding this into the city at the end of the video. Stay tuned. This is the amount of space required to make the clam. Here are all of the materials that we will use throughout the build. Begin by placing eight mangrove planks in a row on the ground. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Destroy a block to the right, place a polished end in sight in there with a jungle door on top, and then place eight more mangrove planks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We then want to extend towards the back of the build by 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We are then going to extend all the way across the back of the build and join all the way back to where we first started. Next, we are going to remove all of the grass inside of our bar and replace it with polished and inside. Next, we want to make our way to the front left hand side of our bar and place two white concrete. One, two. Then a cyan concrete. Then two glass. One, two. Then cyan concrete. And then two white concrete. Extend past the door and place two white concrete, cyan concrete, two glass, cyan concrete, and two white concrete. We then want to extend our cyan concrete's upper row and place glass in between. We then want to fill the space in between the doors and the windows in using white concrete. We are then going to add two more rows of white concrete on top of our walls followed by a single row of light grey concrete, like this. Around our doorway, we are going to place smooth quartz block on the left side of our door, smooth quartz block on the right side of our door, with smooth quartz stairs on top of the smooth quartz facing outwards, with a single smooth quartz slab connecting together across the top. You can even add a glass in here instead of a white concrete, just in case you think it looks better. It's actually a little bit ambiguous what this block is above the door in the actual show anyway. Next, we are going to place smooth quartz block in front of the left side of our build and in front of the right side of our build, extending from the floor all the way up to our light gray concrete. We then want to place a row of smooth quartz slabs connecting both sides together just underneath the light grey concrete row. We then want to place a smooth quartz block here and here. The positionings for these are, as you can see, just on the inside row of the window. We are then going to place upside down smooth quartz stairs here, here here and here in front of our smooth quartz blocks. We are then going to connect the stairs together just left to right like this, just at the top using smooth quartz slabs, just like this. Guys, we've talked about this. If I forget my helmet, you've got to tell me. Next, we are going to place a row of three, one, two, three, green terracotta in this position. This hangs off of the smooth quartz slab row and is parallel to the door. Extend this row down, add bamboo slabs underneath and on top with upside down and sideways facing bamboo stairs like this on the sides. We also want to add a single bamboo button here and above all of this, we are going to place an orange terracotta extending from here all the way across 
to here. Add another row of orange terracotta on top of this that is simply just one row shorter on both sides. Add yellow terracotta all the way around this to form a semicircle. And there we go. Next, we are going to remove all of the grass slash grid in front of our build. And replace it with smooth stone. We also want to add a red nether brick wall right here. And now it's time to make some banners. So the first banner is going to be a bottle. This is made by placing a yellow banner in the loom with some green dye. We are going to apply the pale pattern followed by the perfess inverted pattern, put yellow dye in there and apply the bourgeois pattern. That's banner number one. Banner number two is incredibly simple. Green banner, yellow dye, thing banner pattern. There you go, nice and easy. So the bottle will be applied here and the clam, also known as the thing, is going to be applied here. And lastly, for the banners, on the front of the build anyway, we are going to place cyan banners just hanging off of the sides of each of the windows. There is a way to make them look a little bit more like shutters, but I'm, I'm not certain I like it. Let me show you. So basically what we do is we throw down a loom, open it up, and we place a cyan banner in there. And we add some blue dye, and we do the chief pattern, the base pattern, and then we add cyan dye in here, and we apply the bourgeois pattern. We then put blue dye back in, add the fess pattern, and then we put cyan dye back in, and we apply the bourgeois pattern one more time. So these are meant to look like window shutters, okay? And I mean, it's up to you whether you like this better or worse than the cyan banners. I kind of just like the cyan banners myself, but I'll, I'll let you do you. A more obvious choice, an easier choice, of course, would be to use warped trap doors, but I, I just don't like them. If they were like horizontal rather than vertical, the holes I mean, then it wouldn't be so bad, but meh. We are now going to come to the left side of the build, which seems like an odd choice, but we are going to start off by placing three, one, two, three, white concrete extending up from the mangrove. We then want to extend to the right by one, place three glass, one, two, three, extending right, followed by three white concrete, one, two, three, three more glass, one, two, three, and then we just want to connect to this wall. What we are then able to do is extend white concrete across the top of this, and also across the back of the build, join down to this corner, and also extend towards the front of the build. And what we can then do is just fill each one of these sides in with white concrete. On the sides of the build, we actually want to have a row of smooth quartz block that extends from the front all the way to the back, just like this. We then want to connect these rows together using light grey concrete. Next, we want to add rows of smooth quartz block here and here, extending up from the ground all the way up to the top of this wall, with a row of smooth quartz slab underneath the light grey concrete, just like so. We then want to add a smooth quartz block in the same position that we have them on the front. So we can actually line up with the windows on the front. If you'll remember, it's these inside rows. So if we just add it here and here, equally so, you can line up with the row of orange terracotta just on the end there. And this is important as what we are then able to do is just place upside down smooth quartz stairs extending off of these with rows of smooth quartz slab in between all of the upside down stairs just like this. And last but not least we can just fill the entire roof section in using light grey concrete. 
With the entire outside of the drunken clan complete, we are now able to head inside and work on the interior. First of all, we are going to add a little bit of light. So, place a note block here in this position near the door, with a beacon on top of it, daylight detector on top of that, a couple of dark oak trapdoors flipped up on the left and right side of this, and there we have, kind of, a jukebox. Next, we are going to place, in between the door and the jukebox, in the middle-ish of the ceiling, which is actually here, if you line up in between those two windows, place an okra frog light here with oak trap doors surrounding it, like so, and we have a light slash ceiling fan. Next, along this wall, we are going to place two rows of green terracotta with a row of oak slabs on top of the terracotta. Then we are going to extend the center row of slabs up to the ceiling. Next, we are going to place a green terracotta here in this position, followed by three mangrove stairs, one, two, three, a green terracotta, spruce plank, green terracotta, three mangrove stairs, and then a green terracotta. So we want to extend the green terracottas outwards first, the row of spruce plank outwards with a row of spruce slabs on top of the plank. We then want to extend the mangrove stairs on the left and right outwards as well, leaving a block in the middle where we will then stick a spruce fence with a spruce trap door on top, and those are the booths. Next, we want to come all the way to the doorway, leave a gap of two in front of it, one, two, and then we want to place a row of spruce planks that extends all the way from that position all the way to the wall. We then want to place a birch fence every other block extending from the wall all the way across, with a red carpet on top of each fence. We are then going to leave a gap of one from the spruce planks extending this way and place a row of stripped birch wood like this, parallel to the planks. Behind this, we want to place a row of mangrove, then a spruce plank, leave a gap of two, one, two, and then place a spruce plank. We then want to leave a gap of two, one, two, place a spruce plank, then a mangrove plank, spruce door, mangrove plank, just like this. We are then going to extend the mangrove planks upwards, including around the door, just like this. We then want to extend the spruce planks upwards as well. Then we are going to place light gray concrete behind the two gaps in between the planks like this and extend them from the floor to the ceiling. And we're just gonna fill this little gap in with stripped birch wood. We want to place a black concrete here and extend it left and right <laughs> like that. Then we are going to place spruce trap doors here, here, and also just here and here like that. We also want to add a polished andensite stair here with a mixture of flower pots and brown and green candles stacked up behind this area and on the shelves as well. So these are meant to just like diff look like different uh, alcoholic bottles of any description and they, they kind of do that nicely. You know what, maybe to complete this effect a little bit better, if we had a couple of brewing stands kind of just littered about the place, we can also use sea pickles for this too, so we can add another uh, different material in this mix. We also want to add an exit sign above the door. It's just a mangrove sign that says exit. And we also want to hang alternating blue and red banners along this wall, kind of like leading towards the bar. Before we move on to the next part of the bar, we are going to place this painting in this position. Just in case you are curious, it is this painting specifically. And left and right of this painting, we will place an item frame with arrows pointed down inside of the item frames, with buttons applied to the wall where the item frames are. This kind of, sort of, if you squint and imagine really hard, 
looks like a dartboard. This is the main part of the bar complete. This is the really fun part. We've actually managed to capture pretty much every single detail that we can with our limited space. That leaves us with a slight issue though. On this rare occasion, our build is actually too big, despite being very nice and reasonably proportioned on the outside. It's actually too big for the setting that belongs inside of it. So I have added a bathroom. If we move through this door, we can extend this row of light gray concrete across and connect to this wall, walling off all of the empty space behind here. We can then stick a cauldron here in this corner with a spruce trapdoor on top, and we can create a small cubicle using a couple of rows of light gray concrete with an oak door, I don't know why I placed it that way, an oak door positioned here with a flower pot here in the corner, two upside down smooth quartz stairs here and here, tripwire hook above one with an item frame underneath the hook, flower pot here and a light gray shulker box here. So to make it a little bit more like an actual bar, we do have a bathroom as well. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is our build 100% fully completed. However, this video is not over. We must now add our drunken clam into our city. Trust me when I tell you that I want nothing more than to add the drunken clam to the new suburbs. It's just such a fun developing area. It's slowly getting loads of really cool builds and becoming complete. But, but, I think that there is a better place. There is a perfect spot for the Drunken Clan. It makes so much sense thematically that the Drunken Clan would be opposite the beach slash the ocean along a touristy area, the bar, the burgers, the arcade. It just, I just, I can't not put it here. It's, I didn't plan it to go here, but it's, it's just perfect. And that is that, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope that you have enjoyed this video. Please do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Click that little bell next to the subscription button to ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. If you would like to make anything else by me, please check the description below for the mini city builds playlist. We have over 100 builds in there for you to enjoy. Alternatively, the sidebar, hopefully the next upcoming video, YouTube, or just check the channel. Consider becoming a channel member today and you will gain access to a cool avatar next to your name, some unique emojis, and access to my mini city design world containing every single build that has been added to mini city to date. This is well over a hundred builds, all chronologically ordered. Java edition only. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Good. Bye.